Welcome back to the class Computational Neuroscience, Neuronal Dynamics of Cognition. In the previous section, we have defined the notion of asynchronous stationary activity. Let us now look at the input to a single neuron during such a state of asynchronous activity. What we will see is that the population activity plays an important role. From a more mathematical perspective, this part introduces the first steps of a mean field argument. So, these are now the notions. We have the population activity. This is a bar of t because it's averaged over a small time window. And now let's formalize our assumptions. We, when we looked at cortical populations, we said, okay, we have cortical columns, we have neurons in layer 3 of a certain cortical column. We go to the extreme. We say, mathematically, all neurons are the same. All the connections have synapses, which are the same. Each neuron receives input from exactly k neurons, and each neuron receives the same external input, which can be time-dependent. And as a first step, let's look at full connectivity. So each neuron in a network of n neurons receives exactly n inputs. It receives inputs from all other, all other neurons. And now just for the sake of visualization, so this is my network, this is my neuron I, I'm interested in one specific neuron I, and I can just take this neuron and pull it out, and then the network would look like this, okay? And I can see all these spikes arriving at this neuron, different spike trains arriving at this neuron, and I ask about the total input to this neuron I. So this neuron here receives spike trains, for example, it receives a spike from some other neuron K, and when the spike arrives, it causes a response. So what I plot here is the synaptic input into this neuron. And then another spike arrives from another neuron. It will also give a little response. Another input arrives from yet another neuron. And you see that different spikes from different neurons will arrive. Each one of these will give one of these little synaptic responses. And now I just add them all up. So here's the first input, then comes the second input, then comes the third input, fourth input, and you see this will give the total input. Let's write this down. I have my total input, the total synaptic input, coming from the network at time t, is the sum over all these little pulses. Now one of these little pulses this is the spike of neuron K with firing time TKF. It causes this response. I call this alpha of T minus TKF. And now I have many of these inputs. Each of these inputs, so this is my neuron K, each of these inputs comes with a certain weight, which I call WIK. This is the weight from neuron K onto neuron I, W, I, K, and this is the synaptic input to neuron I. But then there are many of these spikes. They come from different neurons, K, and these are different spike times. So this is my total synaptic input coming from the network, from this population of neurons. Now let's work on this a little bit. This looks mediumly complicated. Now, sometimes it's useful to make an expression even more complicated. Let's do this. So, I write alpha of s, and then I say the spike times delta function t minus tkf minus s, and then I integrate over s. Now, if you work backwards, how do you work out an integral over a delta function? Well, we integrate over s. So wherever you see a s, you replace by what's in the, inside the delta function. So it gives back the t minus tkf. Then I still have to keep track of my wik, and I keep track over the sums. Now we have full connectivity and I assume that a completely homogeneous network. That was one of my assumptions. All the synapses are the same. So all my synapses 
W, I, K have the same constant value. And I pick this constant, I say it's W0 divided by N. It's just the choice of the constant, the N, the factor N will come in handily in just a minute. So let's put it up here. WIK is W0 over N. And now I don't, the sum over K can now be moved inside. So I move the sums inside to a place here. So I have sum over K, sum over F, and then I copy this, delta T minus TKF minus S. I keep the DS. I keep the integral and I keep the alpha of s. Now let's do one more step. I take this 1 over n and put it inside here. So I remove it here and write 1 over n. Now let's look at this term. This is the sum over all neurons, over all spikes. So this is the sum over all spikes of all neurons. But this should remind us of something. Didn't we have this before? Some of all spikes, all neurons. Yes, we had it before. This is exactly our definition of the population activity. Now, because we have the S here, I have to write T minus S. So I have the result that my total input, the synaptic input, is an integral over the S with the filter function alpha of S and this is the input into neuron I. So this is my result, and it's worth discussing this a little bit. First observation, I have an index I here on the left-hand side, but there's no index on the right-hand side. This means the index I is no longer necessary. The index I has disappeared. Therefore, the synaptic input current into neuron I is the same for neuron I equal 10, or neon i equal 25, or neon i equal 3,346. It's independent of i. The current is the same for all neurons. Second observation. The input current mainly depends on the population activity. This is the instantaneous population activity, and it's filtered with a function alpha. So this quantity is like the A-bar introduced earlier. As you may remember, the A-bar can be defined for arbitrary filters, exponential, Gaussian, square rectangular. And here we have a natural filter. The filter is the size, the time course of the synaptic input current pulse. So for full connectivity, which means each input, each neuron receives input from all other neurons in the network, we found a nice result. And that is the total input current is the sum over all the different spikes of all the neurons. But this sum can be re-expressed with the population activity and the synaptic filtering kernel alpha of s. Now there's a minor difference in notation. I had called this w0 before. Otherwise, this is the same formula. So the message here is all neurons in the fully connected network receive exactly the same total input current. They are, each neuron here is embedded in the mean field of what the other neurons sent to this one. And that's why it's called a mean field argument. Now, importantly, we said at the beginning that the population activity is natural because it provides a natural readout. A postsynaptic neuron, a receiving neuron, actually samples the input, the activity of a whole population. And while this was an intuition before, this has now become, the pre become a precise statement. The input to neuron I, or any other neuron, is driven by the population activity. This is time-dependent input coming from the network. This is the synaptic input. And in addition, this whole population may also receive external input, which could also be time-dependent. So let me summarize this section. The total input into any neuron in a fully connected network is given by the population activity and the external input, where the external input summarizes the input arising from 
other populations. Before we go on, let's just have a quick look at the quiz.